The BERT proxy is made up of four tabs, the intercept, the HTTP history, the WebSocket history, and the options. The proxy tool, this is the most important feature of BERT suite that you will have to get used to. This is a tab on the which the packet that you receive and the packet that you send out pass through, hence the name proxy. And the thing about this tool, it lets you see the packets, the header, and the information present in it. It doesn't just end there, it allows you to edit the packets, which is a feature that you will appreciate with time as you use it. The first tab under the proxy tool is the intercept tab. Here you can launch the inbuilt pre-configured Chromium browser. This is the one I'm using for the tutorial. Um, otherwise, you can use a different browser, but you have to go through configuration, which I'm not doing for this tutorial. Um, the other thing which is very important is the central element of the proxy, or perhaps of the whole suit. That's the intercept button. Uh, by default, it's on, but I've got it off to let some traffic, which we'll see in the next tab, the history tab. The HTTP history tab in the proxy tool is the single most important data store for any security testing project in Burp. This is where we can see all captured requests and responses in Burp. And I can tell you, you're probably going to be spending at least half of your time here. One of the big parts of the history is the filter, um, essentially just to reduce the noise. Um, the history tab, um, as you can see, um, it has a lot of sortable columns um, to manage, analyze, and work with the data. Um, I mean, the one that you should pay attention to, for example, is the params column. And which indicates that we have parameters that can be fuzzed um, using another tool um, called Intruder, for example. And you can also pay attention to the status, um, which tells us what kind of responses we are getting. Uh, essentially, the history um, gives us a very good idea about the functionality, the architecture, and the common patterns that might indicate vulnerability, um, and, and so on. The next tab in the proxy to list the WebSocket history. Um, I don't know if you noticed it, but most online shops have a live chat feature implemented, uh, often using uh, WebSocket. Um, things that you might want to pay attention to is the direction of the message, outgoing versus incoming. You'll probably see um, shown in this particular area, as well as the requests in this number. Like any request, they can be manipulated and replied. Um, the last tab under the proxy tool is the options. Um, we've got quite a few headings here. Um, under the proxy listener, um, you might not be aware of it, but um, you can intercept traffic from all sorts of devices. It could be your tele, it could be your iOS if you've got one, or Android device. And all you have to do is just to start another listener um, on a different port and interface and add it in this particular area. Um, the other thing to know is that Burp runs at a layer below the layer in which encryption takes place. Therefore, the content of the web page is already encrypted when it reaches uh, Burp. So here, Burp can actually generate or regenerate a per site certificate, which the browser needs to accept. And um, I'll do a tutorial on, uh, on certificate, watch this space. Um, yeah, so the next headings, um, Pretty much a follow up from the scope and um, the display configurable options for intercepting requests and response. Um, you can check, uh, you can uncheck the default and uh, the verb suit defaults here. I've left them on, and um, you can also check um, the URL there. I often do that, um, especially if the target is in scope. Um, at the very bottom here, in match and replace. Um, you can also try to make the remote web application reveal new functionalities that usually are exposed to specific devices only uh, just by enabling uh, a rule here um, for matching the user agent. You can, for example, replace the current browser and emulate an Android device. 